Hi everyone, my name is Sunil Riggett, consultant psychiatrist from Psych Scene Hub. Welcome to this edition of Hub Bites. Today I'm going to be taking you through obsessive compulsive disorder, the key clinical features, the neurobiology, and the treatment algorithm. So let's get going. Obsessive compulsive disorder essentially consists of two key components obsessions, and the key aspects of obsessions are that they are persistent, unwanted, repetitive, intrusive thoughts, in some cases images and urges that are ego dystonic. So patients will often describe them as being senseless. The next component is compulsions and compulsions are repetitive behaviors or mental acts that are performed to reduce the anxiety that is associated with uh, the obsession or in some cases to prevent a feared consequence. So not that long ago, I had a patient who had compulsions in response to an obsession that something would happen, something really bad would happen to their children and they would therefore uh, carry out a compulsion to prevent that feared consequence. Now when we look at um, the types of obsessions and the compulsions associated with it, there are a range of thoughts um, that come up as part of obsessions. We've got fear of contamination, pathological doubt. So as you can see, the associated compulsions, often with fear of contamination, you will have cleaning or washing rituals. With pathological doubt, you have a repeated checking. For example, have I locked the door? Have I shut the stove, etc.? Uh, in some cases, sexual, violent, intrusive thoughts, so repetitive undoing thoughts are compulsions. Fear of causing harm, need for symmetry and exactness, religious obsessions, and superstitious obsessions. So these are the main themes that we should be asking patients in relation to their obsessions. Next, when we think about structured tools, uh, the most common one is the Y box, which is the Yale Brown Obsessive Compulsive Scale. Uh, but there is the Obsessive Compulsive Inventory short version as well that can be used. Now, when we think about uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, it's important to rule out some of the other related disorders as well that can coexist, such as body dysmorphic disorder, trichotillomania, hoarding disorder, skin picking disorder, etc. Now, when we think about the neurobiology, the key part of the brain that's involved is a corticostriatal thalamic cortical loop, which is CSTC. So this is a, a really useful um, sort of quote uh, from Saxena et al. who proposed the model. They, what they essentially said was there was an imbalance between the excitatory and the inhibitory loops, which causes a brain lock resulting in the repetitive thoughts, the repetitive obsessions, intrusive thoughts that happen. So when we look at the two inhibitory and the excitatory pathways, so th the first one is the excitatory pathway where the overactivation of the cortical striatal thalamic cortical loop, so this is the loop here, involving the orbitofrontal cortex is associated with obsession. So overactivation of this loop leads to obsessions. But then we have the inhibitory area that involves the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex. And this is the inhibitory, the break. And the imbalance between the two results in an overactivation and it results in lots of obsessions and uh, associated compulsions. So you can see this is the indirect inhibitory pathway. Now, when we think about neurotransmitter systems, it's not just the serotonin system that's involved. The glutamate pathways can be, can be involved and dopamine. And you'll see that this is reflected in the treatment algorithm that we'll go through. Now, when we think about treatment for the mild to moderate end of the spectrum, one can start off with psychotherapy. But as you can see here, that in clinical practice, both SSRIs and CBT are often used together. And the CBT component is exposure response prevention. So this is really important when involving a psychologist for the treatment of obsessive, compu uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, it's important to not just consider supportive counseling or counseling as such. It should be exposure response prevention, which is a specific kind of CBT technique. It's a structured form of psychotherapy where the patient is exposed to situations that would provoke the obsessions and the associated anxiety and distress. But the patient is then instructed to resist the associated compulsions. Now, what this does is results in two processes that the anxiety will habituate or the anxiety and the distress will habituate and then become extinct. So the patient should remain in that situation 
exposed to that situation and then prevent a response and that's exposure response prevention. Now, of course, when there are thoughts involved, when the compulsions also involve mental rituals, then things like thought stopping may be required. Now, the frequency, as you can see here, exposure response prevention is advised to have a frequency and duration of 13 to 20 weekly sessions. So it requires a, a reasonable period of time, um, the therapy to, to be effective. When we come to pharmacotherapy, the first line treatments are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. One of the key aspects with the SSRIs is that the doses should be high doses. So when we look at the doses here, if we were to look at fluoxetine, it would be 80 milligrams. Fluvoxamine, 300 milligrams. So the ones I tend to use commonly are citalopram, 80 milligrams, or escitalopram, 40 milligrams. The important thing clinically is that when you increase the dose of citalopram above 40, it's important to carry out a QTC prolongation ECG and the same for a citalopram when you increase it above 20 milligrams. And the other key aspect is duration. SSRI should be prescribed for at least 12 weeks to determine responsiveness. So not like depression where four to six weeks is sufficient for a response in OCD should be prescribed longer to determine response. If they don't respond to it, then the next line is considered to be clomipramine. And this is a tricyclic antidepressant, but has quite a predominant serotonergic effect. The main limitations are significant anticholinergic side effects. So one should be mindful for those. For treatment refractory OCD, antipsychotic medications can be very effective. So augmentation strategies so, such as aripiprazole, risperidone augmentation, haloperidol, and olanzapine. Of course, they can come, can come with metabolic burden or increased um, side effects such as prolactin, etc. And one should be mindful for those. The other agents for augmentation include memancine. These are glutamatergic agents, lamotrigine, topiramate, and NAC, and acetylcysteine. But the doses required are higher doses, 2,400 to 3,000 milligrams per day. Other agents are 5-HT3 antagonists and nutraceuticals such as myonositol, 5-HT, and milk thistle. Uh, there isn't a substantial evidence base for uh, this, these agents, and therefore, of course, these should be used um, as last resort when patients haven't responded. For much more severe OCD, of course, neurosurgery uh, does have evidence, but it's for the most severe cases. Uh, other uh, evidence-based strategies include deep breath stimulation and RTMS, although the evidence uh, for them is currently limited, but we may know more in the future. The other important aspect with OCD is please do rule out other comorbidities and these include depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, schizo obsessive type presentations, personality disorder and tic disorders. So let's quickly go through the summary algorithm. The key steps are, of course, if there's mild to moderate OCD, you can start off with either exposure response prevention or an SSRI. You wait for response for approximately 12 weeks. If they respond, of course, then you can taper the, S, uh, the SSRI, but recommendations are that uh, medication should be considered for at least one to two years before tapering down. CBT, however, with the ERP component can be tapered with monthly booster sessions for three to six months. If the patient hasn't responded, then, and you've started off with exposure response prevention, then initiate a SSRI. And if there's no response or minimal or no response, then you would consider a referral to a specialist for either medication or behavioral management. And it is important, of course, to consider to rule out additional comorbidities, uh, alternative diagnostic explanations as well. Now, if there aren't any alternate diagnostic explanations, then of course you can now consider the alternative approaches, some of what we've discussed earlier. So as you can see here, you can intensify the CBT, you can optimize the SSRI dose to the maximum dose, you can cross titrate to a different SSRI and optimized dose, or switch from SSRI to clomipramine, or augment the SSRI with an atypical antipsychotic medication, which is also evidence-based. The other option uh, number five you can see here is augment SSRI with clomipramine. Now this should be done only under specialist supervision because of the risk of serotonin syndrome, both very serotonergic agents. 
If there is no response again in eight to 12 weeks, then you're really looking at more intensive outpatient, partial hospitalization or residential treatment. And if there's still no response, as you can see in three to six months, then that's when we would look at SSRI augmentation strategies or monotherapy with experimental agents. So ketamine, lamotrigine, celecoxib, ondansetron, or one may have to consider, depending on the severity, uh, deep brain stimulation, neurosurgery, and uh, repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation also has some evidence in resistant OCD. Um, if they do respond, of course, then you would taper CVT with the ERP component with monthly booster sessions. You may continue medication management for one to two years before deciding to taper. And you would, or the other option is to consider restarting CBT with the ERP component during the medication uh, tapering. So overall, this is a summary of the neurobiology, the key clinical features, and the treatment algorithm. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, take care, stay safe. It's important to recognize, you speak to your doctor because this is not medical advice. This is simply a, uh, a lecture, an overview of obsessive compulsive disorder. So once again, I'll see you in another Hub Bite. Take care everyone and stay safe.